episode, what is it, three of the LeBron J.J. Reddick podcast. Being around a young guy. Basketball evolution, this one is called. Do you have that too? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Yeah, oh, we're stepping on that one. Let's see if they be yapping or backing. This guy's going to be good. Okay. Um, coaches and veterans being able to get on them. And obviously, we're not watching all this. I'm going to skip through it a bit. But let's see. Back talk. There's no uh, all of that. It's just almost, they almost look okay. like. What you got to say, Bron Bron? Just keep on coming with it because I want to see if how much I can. Mm-hmm. I want to see how much. Just keep on. Keep on because I'm, I'm absorbing everything. That's when you know, like, oh, he's. He's going to be in this league for for a long time. One of the things that I always noticed was, um, and I wasn't perfect perfect at this my, when I was like a rookie, especially. There, there's an element of fear. Meaning, once we step on the court, I'm not right, scared. Right, 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 right. But there's an element of fear. Like I, I need to be in the training room on time. Yeah, yeah. I need to do all the lifts. Yeah. That my Strength coach is telling Absolutely. me to do. If my PD guy, player development guy, my PD guy's telling me to be on the court at 10 o'clock for an 11 o'clock practice, that guy's there at 9.55 ready for to go. For sure. Okay. It's, it's, it's like the small stuff. Yeah. It's the small stuff. It is a small stuff. Uh, we are recording this on Thursday, opening day of the NCAA tournament, official opening day. I do not count the play-in. Yeah, I don't, I don't count the play-in. Not because I'm old. Damn, that's a minute. I was now as an NBA player, but I do not count the play-in. <laughs> I don't get it's like it's not official because you're no. still playing into the tournament. Yeah. Um okay. your high school coach just got a big win about an hour ago. Yes, he did. Mm. What what did you learn from him? Man, I'm gonna talk about what do you know? Uh yes. no ta- hey. And he said and I started yapping off. Yeah. And he said to me, he said, I'm gonna tell you right now, shut the fuck up. Whoa. And he gave me the look. Mind you, I'm I'm my size. But 155 pounds. <laughs> so I, I was like, oh, he's going to kick my ass. And I didn't say anything. We checked the ball up. As soon as somebody passed it, he just popped me in the, in, in the face, right? My jaw still okay. pops this day. <laughs> and pretty much from that day on, I had a healthy level of fear for high school. <laughs> a healthy level of fear. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you think there's anything for you? I know for me, like, I play for Coach K. Yeah, yeah. I, I play for a great high school coach. I played for Boo Williams in AAU. We talked about our coaching and how important that was to us yeah. last time. Do you think for you there was anything transferable from what you learned in high school to what you had to do in the NBA, especially early on? From a coach's perspective? No, or from, just from on the court. On the court. Being a, being a player on the court. Okay. No. Totally different game? Um, it was a totally different game, but – Seems the, like. the nuance and the and the fundamentals and you know the things that was the being, fundamentals that was being taught to me as an eighteen year old I I, I kind of had already knew a lot of that shit. Mm. I mean it's it's weird to kind of say because you feel like when you get to the NBA you're going to learn so much more, which I eventually did. You know, and I think that just came with like we always talk about you experience. know experience. Yeah. The best teacher in life is experience. You know, but. Okay. When I when I got to the NBA, the biggest adjustment I had was literally just going from like, oh shit, I don't have to go to class every day. Mm. Um, I, you know, I'm going from 27 game season to now 82. So like, okay. oh shit, like after 27 games in the NBA, you know, around about 32 games, I'm like, I'm exhausted. Dang. You know, so now like. What 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 can I do to get the get the energy back going? But as far as when I stepped out on the floor, there wasn't too much of an adjustment. Um, I felt like I was physical um, enough. I felt like I had the size, okay. I had the speed, obviously. Good for you, buddy. I know, but I- Clearly, here we had aid. Took the one dribble baseline mm-hmm. and see booze after he set the screen kind of backed up into the pocket around yeah, the elbow. Yep. There was like space, a little space. Mm-hmm. On the second one, you came off the other side and curled, and Ricky Davis hit you at the elbow, and I had the screenshot on my phone. Okay. And it's Z on the left block, 
Yep. See, see booze on the right block. See booze. Spotting up from about 17 feet at the right wingish, yeah. but not really space. Not really space. And then Ricky Davis is just standing there at the top of the key. It's like so literally it's about eight all, or nine people. <laughs> yeah, eight or in nine the paint. people, all just right there. Yeah, right there. And then you drove back and hit a little fall way going left. Yeah. When did you start to feel like the spacing was changing in the NBA? Mm. Um, you know, that's a, that's a good question. I'm, I'm trying to think. I, I think the spacing started to change in the NBA. I think. I think Stan Van Gundy had a lot to do with it. Mm. You know, now that I think about it, I'm, and I'm thinking because I'm in the, I was in the East, and obviously, um, you know, they, they 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 had a lot of spacing, you know, in Sacramento in the early 2000s, but it it wasn't a lot of spacing. Maybe they just had some shooting. Obviously, Mike Bibb. Maybe Steph Curry. Maybe um, Steph Curry. You know, LeBron go Rod Curry even more. Corner space. They, you know, um, you know, Vladi, you know, could play the elbow, could play the corner, could hit the, you know, the three at times. See, uh, you know, see Webb from time to time with space a little bit, but he was more in the post. Um, you know, Bobby Jackson would fly off, obviously, for shots. But, you know, I don't, I believe Stan with, 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 with Dwight, you know, kind of in that, that 07, 08, 09 kind of range, they started to change it a lot. You know, um, I hadn't seen that much space because I played against the Detroit Pistons and obviously you have, you know, you have Rip on his floppy down action, you know, flying off the floppy down or the two chests or whatever the case may be. Um, but with Stan, I think he saw what he had in Dwight and he started to build that team around him to like, I want nothing but space, you know, yeah. and we saw that. We saw it when Rashard Lewis got on that team. We saw it when he do turkey. Thank you. Yeah. T hurt his shoulder guarding Dwight in preseason, mm. and uh, we tried Turk at the four. Right, in, in <laughs> and it's like you guys are out there, game, right? Absolutely. But also just for the offense. Now all of a sudden, you're forced to make a decision in a Jameer Nelson, Dwight Howard pick and roll. He do Turkaloo. Yeah. If you decide to go under him because you don't want him getting to his right hand, you you have to make a decision now. He's going to shoot. He's going to shoot a three. He's going to shoot it. So we would run that angle pick and roll. Yep. We'd have a shooter in the left corner. Yep. Turk uh, going to his right hand. Yep. Dwight rolling and two shooters. And space. two shooters. Where is the help coming from? And you can't you can't switch it. Hey. Dwight's gonna bury you, hit you with 19 elbows, <laughs> and he doesn't care about getting one or two fouls off the elbows. But he's gonna dunk you in the rim. This is like super duper man Dwight at the time. I rewatched Game Five the other day. And uh, I've never watched the series, by the way. You haven't. No. I'm very curious to get your thoughts and what you remember about that series specifically. Because this is what I remember. And I was like, I'm going to go watch. What was the series? 4-2. Four 4-2. Two. Four two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 4-2. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't talk to the media after game six. I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed. Young I took Brown, a shower and got shown on the bus. I remember that now. Yeah, I was pissed. Game five, I, I was watching the fourth quarter. Literally your offense. You didn't match up Hunt. For the first part of the, the fourth quarter, you had uh, two bigs mm -hmm. in the dunker spot, either dunker spot. You had Mo or Delante. At one point, it was Wally Zerbiak spotting up. Yeah. And you would post up Mikel Petrus at like 19 feet and then try to go one-on-one. -on -one. It was really interesting to watch that. Burke. Versus one break. Spread, pick, and roll. The Diddy. Space. Yeah, it was like, really interesting. Like, and by the way, how the fuck is he functioning by, with by this? By the way, I'm, this is not this is not like a knock on Mike Brown at all. Right. Like I'm not saying that. It was just what we were doing was so different at the time. Yeah. And it wasn't like the next year everybody's like, oh, we're gonna try to emulate what Orlando did. Right. 2011. I'll never forget this game. We played against the Minnesota Timberwolves in our new arena, and that's when we had Ryan Anderson and Richard. And we would get to our spread pick and roll, and it didn't matter where Ryan or Richard was. They would tag Dwight with Kevin Love, the four man. No matter where he was. No matter where he was. So if he's the high guy. He's taking him all the way to the rim. On the double side, they're, they're tagging him at the rim. And Ryan and Richard are just sitting there teeing him up. It's bizarre. It's super bizarre. I'm not going to gas you up. I'm not going to gas you up. I'm going to say one thing, though, real quick. <laughs> You averaged 38, 8, and 8 in that series mm -hmm. with that offense. 
and, and that spacing with no space <laughs> with no space with no space it was wild it is wild to think back on like i said i have not watched that series since it happened and to think that i, that I mean i'm gonna call it let me know your thoughts